Ah, hello there, adventurer, and welcome to our humble little guild hall. I'm so glad that you're here. We're always looking for fine adventurers such as yourself. Here at the guild hall, you'll be able to find the very best mix of Dungeons and Dragons and of anime. This week, we're going to be starting a new series that will take us through all of the subclasses for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. We're going to be building a character based on each subclass and inspired by some of our favorite anime. The first class then that we're going to be summoning up is the Artificer Alchemist. If you're here because you've always wanted to play an alchemist, well really, good for you. Listen, is it the strongest Artificer subclass? Nope. Is it an S tier subclass? Nope. But if you build it knowing what it is, what it is good for, and what you want out of it, Will it be a whole hell of a lot of fun to play? Absolutely. The alchemist is the oldest tradition among artificers. Using their alchemist supplies to combine various ingredients, they create amazing elixirs. These potion-like creations can come in real handy to themselves and to their fellow party members. Before diving in any deeper, let's take a high level look at the alchemist and discuss some aspects of this subclass that make it unique and that are important to keep in mind when choosing to play an alchemist. First is that the alchemist is a buff build. It isn't going to give you the biggest damage dealer or the toughest tank. This subclass is centered around the alchemist's ability to create elixirs and pass those out to the other members of the party, or to keep a few for themselves. That leads us to the second point which is that being an artificer, and especially being an alchemist, means that you are capable of creating a lot of things that will be really useful to you and to your party. With other artificer classes, strong arguments can be made for keeping those items for oneself. With the alchemist though, the elixirs at least really beg to be shared. This subclass will work best if you're ready to lean into enjoying a style of play where your character is focused on keeping the party in the best possible condition. Next, let's look at some of our favorite anime for possible inspiration. Right off the bat, one might think we would focus on Full Metal Alchemist for no other reason than the shared name. There are certainly plenty of characters within the show that we can draw inspiration from. But mechanically speaking, the magic of Full Metal Alchemist and how the Artificer Alchemist in 5e work are pretty different. Therefore, we're going to expand our horizon a bit when thinking about this build, because there are a lot of fun archetypes to pull from. The Alchemist as a subclass focuses heavily on their usage of powerful reagents to make their potion-like elixirs. In my mind, this quickly evokes characters like the lovesick Shinra Kashitani from Do Da Da Da, or maybe Ryo Futaba from Rascal Does Not Dream. These are characters with the high intelligence and scientific know-how we would want for our alchemist, but that also have some pretty over-the-top personalities that can really help make a character memorable. If you enjoy lighter fare, 2021 had an interesting entry in the form of Drugstore in Another World. I can easily imagine an entire campaign built around a magical pharmacist and his companions adventuring to find cures for their village's quirky yet endearing ailments. Personally though, as I started building my alchemist, I kept coming back to one show in particular, which was Food Wars Shokugeki no Soma. If you haven't seen the show, it focuses on students attending an elite cooking school where they compete to rise within the ranks of the student body and grow their renown as culinary experts. Each character introduces a new cooking specialty and creating a new flavor combination was a central aspect of the show. Through their experimentation with new ingredients and new methods of cooking, the characters reach greater heights as they fought for a coveted spot amongst the school's top 10. This motivation really resonates with me when thinking about the alchemist. Cooking and alchemy, as it's described in 5e, share that element of mixing ingredients, reagents, spices, chemicals, and magic to create mind-shattering new creations. 
Food Wars gives us two key ingredients to making our perfect alchemist. First, the need to find new ingredients, new flavors and techniques gives our alchemist both a reason to begin and to continue adventuring. The promise of a new yet unknown ingredient being just a bit further down the trail. Second, central to a lot of shonen anime is the unwavering desire to be the very best. In Food Wars, there is the top 10, but the main character Soma is also very much striving to catch up to his father, one of the world's greatest chefs, as well as find his own signature dish. This really syncs well with the alchemist when trying to define the types of personality traits, bonds, and flaws that will help define and sustain them over a long campaign. Now that we've gotten some inspiration, let's fire up that creative oven and start mixing up a fresh artificer alchemist. Allow me to introduce Ami Copperbell. Ami is a rock gnome hailing from Sharn, the city of towers in Eberron. Not far from the Adventurer's Guild there, Ami's family owns and operates a small but highly regarded apothecary. Being a rock gnome, Ami will get a plus two to her intelligence and a plus one to her constitution. Both make sense considering she has spent her young life poring over countless alchemical tomes and handling all sorts of powerful reagents. Rock gnomes are natural artificers and as such they gain the artificer's lore and tinker traits. We'll talk a little bit more about Ami's family and their shop in a bit, but for now, Ami will get the inheritor background as she will one day take over the family store. In terms of ability scores, Ami has that high intelligence and constitution. Her strength and dexterity are pretty average, and she has a bit better than expected charisma because she's been working the counter at the family store for years, knows how far a friendly smile can go, and certainly knows how to haggle for better prices from vendors. What Ami does not have is wisdom. This plays out in two ways. First, she's never really left the store, so everything is new to her, and she has a predisposition to curiosity. Second, her greatest ambition is to create the ultimate elixir. This means exercising wisdom comes second to the prospect of finding some yet unknown ingredient. Both should put Ami in plenty of hilarious situations, and with a clever DM, could get the whole party into a number of memorable hijinks and misadventures. At level 2, Ami will gain the ability to infuse items. Therefore, she can touch non-magical objects and infuse magic into them. We've already established that alchemists are largely designed to help buff the party. The infusions your alchemist chooses especially if they are looking to hand those infusions out to other party members, may be largely determined by your party's makeup and their individual needs. However, two infusions are fairly critical. First is replicate magic item, because it will allow you to double down on your ability to create immensely useful magical items for you and your party. Second is the homunculus servant. This is like a beefed up find familiar. Like replicate magic items, this infusion is available right at second level and it just needs a gem worth 100 gold pieces as a component. You can determine the homunculus's appearance, it gets its own stat block, and it shares your initiative account. The homunculus servant serves two key purposes for our alchemist. First, it provides a way to shoot elixirs across the battlefield to Ami's other party members. It can also channel magic, so feasibly it could also cast a healing spell for a down party member without Ami having to jump too deep into the fray herself. Next, Force Strike allows her homunculus to make a 30 foot ranged attack. Now it isn't much damage, but it scales with her proficiency bonus. This means that as Ami uses her turn to buff up the party, she can also get in on some of the damage dealing. There are also a lot of great infusions, and there is no hard and fast rule as to which are the best for every party, but Replicate Magic Item and Homunculus Servant will be two surefire options. Third level is where Ami becomes a proper alchemist. 
She gains proficiency with alchemist supplies and access to the expanded alchemist spell list, which at third level will give them healing word and ray of sickness. She can also begin creating her experimental elixirs. At third level, alchemists can create an experimental elixir after having finished a long rest. They can also use a spell slot and an action to create additional elixirs. These elixirs last until they are drunk or until the end of their next long rest. While the expanded spell list does have some good spells in it, the majority of the spell slots should likely go to creating elixirs. If you are feeling the need to be casting more spells, at higher levels there are a number of rings and other items that will allow you to store spells or retrieve spent spell slots. For now though, elixirs and buffing up the party is the real bread and butter. Then at fourth level, Ami can choose either an ability score modifier or a feat. There's a strong argument to be made for using that ASI to boost Ami's intelligence. Almost all of the latter subclass features are tied to an alchemist's intelligence modifier. Mechanically, this makes a lot of sense. However, choosing a feat can really amplify a character's flavor and uniqueness. That is why Ami takes the Poisoner feat and further expands on her ability to control the battle through her dark concoctions. This introduces a darker, more sinister side to Ami's personality, which can be a lot of fun to play against her normally bubbly and optimistic attitude. For inspiration, we can again look to Food Wars and pull from Nao Sadatsuka or Soma's penchant for sadistic, gut-wrenching flavor combinations. At level 5, Ami will become an alchemical savant, which gives her healing spells or damage rolls for acid, fire, necrotic, or poison spells a bonus equal to her intelligence modifier. Her proficiency also goes up to a plus 3, adding a bit of extra damage dealing for her homunculus. In terms of spell choice, spells like Tasha's Caustic Brew, Purify Food and Drink, and Protection from Poison just fit in nicely flavor-wise, and it might be worth investing in some ritual spells as she'll be using a lot of her spell slots to create those elixirs. And if you've taken the Replicate Magic Item Infusion, then 6th level unlocks several magic items that your fellow party members might find useful, like giving Boots of Elvenkind to your rogue. You can also choose an additional infusion. One to consider for Ami might be the Boots of Winding Path. They allow her to run up to an ally on the front line, hand them an elixir, and then bamf back 15 feet and out of harm's way. Maybe also consider the spell Refueling Ring. As an action, the ring recovers one expended third level or lower spell slot. Once it's been used, it cannot be used again until the next dawn. Still, being able to get back a spell slot gives Ami options in a pinch to either cast a spell or potentially create additional elixirs. At 8th level, Ami will get her second ability score increase. For Ami, I chose the chef feat. Listen, is it some stat driving top 10 all-time greatest feat. No, but you'll remember that the inspiration for this build came from Food War Shokugeki no Soma, a show about chefs. Yes, we can build a character entirely around stats, but those characters tend to get real boring outside of battle. Yes, you min-max barbarian on a journey to bring back tales of greatness to your village, ya boring. The chef feat on a character who is always searching for new ingredients and who enjoys sharing their inventions just makes a lot of sense and can help elevate this subclass to a higher flavor tier. And sometimes that is just as important as the mechanics. At ninth level, both gain the restorative reagents feature giving those who drink Ami's elixirs temporary hit points and she gains the ability to cast Lesser Restoration. Both of these features and the 5th level Alchemical Savant rely on her intelligence modifier, hence why we want to make sure Ami's brain power is at its max. 
10th level, therefore, is a big deal because it opens up a ton of options with the Replicate Magic Item Infusion. Now we'll really need to test just how giving your Alchemist really is. If you decide to forego giving Bracers of Archery to your Ranger or Gauntlets of Ogre Power to your Barbarian, then the Headband of Intellect is a must for Ami because that's going to put her Intelligence at a 19. Both the 5th level Alchemical Savant and 9th level Restorative Reagents rely on Ami's Intelligence modifier, so we want a Brainy Alchemist. Taking the headband will allow her to take two feats without having to sacrifice her ASIs for intelligence boosts. Again, to really enjoy this subclass, I think you're going to want to lean more into flavor than stats. Therefore, getting the intelligence boost can probably wait a little bit longer than with other subclasses. At 11th level, Ami gets the spell storing item, allowing her to store a low level artifice or spell. Then, at 12th level, she gets another ASI, which is really kind of dealer's choice. By now, with this build, their flavor has been well established, and this ASI can be used to help shore up any areas that may be lacking depending on what type of campaign you are playing. 14th level will open the last bracket of magically replicable items, and 15th level will give you channel uh, chemical mastery. Chemical Mastery gives you resistance to acid and poison damage, and you are immune to being poisoned. You also can now cast Greater Restoration and Heal. Once you reach 15th level, you are basically finished with any Alchemist-specific features. Staying with the Artificer class at higher levels mostly gives you additional attunement slots. It may be worth choosing a multi-class if you want to expand on this flavor. Regardless of what you do at higher levels, one way or another, a character like Ami, with her outgoing personality and ability to buff up the party like no other, should be a whole hell of a lot of fun to play. While there is no one right way to play any subclass, I hope Ami might encourage you to give the Alchemist a shot. In the comments below, let us know if you've encountered any alchemists in your own travels. And make sure to come back every Friday for new videos or join us on Twitch and Discord. Links are below in the description. So with that, until next time, adventurer, safe journeys.